is worthy. It's all unto you, oh God. He is worthy. You, oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I again want to welcome everyone that is tuning in. Maybe tuning in as they old, you can tell how old I am, and I don't think people tune in anymore. Maybe uh, with digi digital uh, capabilities and Wi Fi and everything else. And I don't know if people tune in, but it's get connected. <laughs> and so we are excited for everyone that's that are uh, connecting with Amen. us Amen. by Amen. way of airways and uh, whatever means necessary. Amen. As said before, nothing will stop the church. Nothing. They may say, hey, you can't gather together with 10 people in a building. We're still going to worship the yes, Lord Most are. High. Yes, we are. We're going to find yes, a way, are. amen, yes, uh, to communicate the yes, gospel. We We're going to find a way, amen, to share with one another. We're going to find a way. Mm. The gates of hell shall not shall prevail not. Shall against not. the church. Shall not. Amen, let alone a disease. Shall not. Amen. I'm so uh, glad that we have the opportunity this morning mm. to... Uh, to do this, um, to give a word of encouragement to to many, uh, to give expressions of praise, and give an opportunity that people can pray. Though we are not joined together in a particular room, we can unify in the spirit yes, and can. in uh, in yes, unity as far as being in one mind and one accord. And we can pray together at the same time yes, simultaneously throughout our area. Amen. And God will move. Mm. Amen. And so that's very important. And I know it's, uh, it's always awesome and it's a pleasure when all the brethren and the sisters are gathered together in his name, uh, fellowship with one another, loving on one another. And I truly miss that. I, 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 I can't, you know... I, I can't express how much that is so important to me. And it's, it's not about gathering together in a building, per se. It's just gathering together. Just I don't together. care where we can be outside, amen, in the park gathering together. Amen. We could be in someone's basement gathering together. The issue is that we need to gather together. And so, amen, I understand the uh, God has allowed this situation to transpire throughout the, this country and this world. Uh, but I, I'm just praying that the, ch the church of the living God can join together. Yes. I yes. don't believe that's the will of God, that the church can't get together. And so, uh, I, and that's what I'm praying yes. for. Amen. And so, uh, as we move along here, um, I do want to share a couple of things. We don't have too many announcements to make, but then the, these are repetitive, so to speak. We'll be doing these every week. Um, there are some other things we're going to probably introduce in the very near future, but um, just want to uh, say, uh, stay connected. We do have means by which to stay connected. Obviously, if you are watching uh, currently right now, you have some sort of platform that you're using to stay connected, but we have Instagram, obviously uh, Facebook. Also, you can catch us on our website, which is a uh, theantioch.org. We'll try to get that up next week. So um, if you're on a, on a another uh, platform, you'll have that information before you. But uh, theantioch.org.com, uh, I'm sorry, theantioch.com. Also, you can uh, see us by way of Vimeo and also um, through, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting all the technology, YouTube, YouTube, amen. And so that's all there. And also, we would like to uh, let you know right now uh, that you can give um, by way of texting and also online giving. So we're just trying to keep up with the uh, technology of today, give you an opportunity to continue to be faithful uh, uh, to God with your finances. And so uh, we're doing that here with just a uh, handful of us. Uh, and so 
if you would like to give, you uh, you can see the information there on, on your screen and on how to give in your devices, whatever you are using at this particular moment. You can also email us by way of um, Antioch North at myantioch.org. That's uh, the, I'm sorry, it's, uh, the uh, Antioch North, I'll get it right. We have the Antioch for our uh, website, but uh, we have my Antioch. And, but anyway, this Antioch North at myantioch.org. That's our email address. And if you would like to email us uh, at any point to get any information, any information as far as what we're doing, um, any information uh, you may have missed or, or you misheard or whatever, just, just send us an email. As a matter of fact, throughout this uh, broadcast here, um, if you can, if you would like to uh, let us know that you are watching, uh, we would love to hear from you. Obviously, throughout the platforms, there are places that you can comment on if you are on Vimeo and, and other uh, platforms, you can send a, a message or whatever. So please, if you're watching, if you're on your own device or whatever, to care, or maybe you're watching with a small group of people, you know, send us a, a little uh, blast and uh, let us know that you are watching. Let us know that you are being blessed by what we're Amen. doing. Let us know that you are connected Amen. and you're participating. We would love to hear from you. Amen. Amen. And we'll do our best to reply to each and every one that uh, sends us a, a comment, a response, or whatever. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we also would like to uh, let you know that we're here to pray for you. If you have any mm -hmm. prayer uh, requests, no matter what it is, uh, big or small, just go ahead and send us an email again. That's uh, Antioch North at myantioch.org. And we will have our prayer teams to pray for you. Um, we will uh, contact you, get back with you, see how you're doing and progressing it things of that nature and do whatever we can. Amen. On, on that um, theme, um, we, we've we been trying to get out, my wife and I, my, mainly my wife, it was her, her idea. Uh, she was, uh, we went out and about to the, in the neighborhood. We've been doing some walking and, and, and things of that nature in the neighborhood. And uh, she created some, made some uh, bo or box of care packages to give to our uh, neighbors. And so, it, you know, with some paper towels and sanitizer or whatever, obviously those are high commodity items. And, uh, and so we were able to connect with our neighbors that way. People are looking for a way to reach out, amen, yes. to, uh, you know, oh, and as a church. And I know we feel like we're limited because we're used to doing evangelism a mm -hmm. certain way. And uh, now we're kind of restricted from that. We are never restricted from being friendly. Never. We're never restricted never. from putting a smile on our face and never. say, God bless you. God yes. loves you or whatever the case may be. And so never. we're encouraging Amen. you um, to just show an expression, a random act of kindness. Yes. And uh, we're going to be doing some some things like that, hopefully in the near future. Also, we, we're going to be introducing virtual Bible studies. And we promoted home Bible studies. And right now, uh, that's just not something that people are interested in on a large scale, but uh, people may still want to receive the word of God. And so we're going to uh, offer and promote virtual Bible studies. Amen. And so you can, you know, video, uh, you can FaceTime one another or do Zoom meetings or whatever. And you can actually with Zoom, obviously, you can uh, you can show your uh, your screen to someone else, and um, and so you can do that and, and have a, a nice and wonderful, I believe, effective Bible study. Amen. Again, I, I'm telling you, the, nothing can stop the church. It's true. And where there's a will, there's a way. That is the truth. And so we want to encourage you to do any and all things to stay connected, to be a part. If you're in a Bible study, teaching a Bible study, don't let what's transpiring hinder you from progressing yes. and growing in God. Amen. Praise God. And so uh, I want to let you know as far as the schedule this evening at 6 p.m. Um, I will be streaming at 6 p.m. We won't have the usual uh, worship, singing and praise and things of that nature, uh, offerings and, and anything else we do and, and, and announcements. 
Um, this will be a, a, um, a, a limited session. I'm going to be teaching uh, for probably about 30 minutes, uh, give or take. And whenever uh, I feel like the Holy Ghost is done teaching the, 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 the lesson, it will, all, it will be the conclusion of what I've been communicating over the last four weeks, four or five weeks. Um, and so we're going to uh, finish that up tonight. And along with that particular uh, wrap-up of this particular um, uh, uh, session, if you will, or this particular topic, what we're going to do is we're going to have what is called weekly, our weekly um, uh, digest that we're going to get to you. And that will give some information on the topic and subject. You'll, uh, it will give you some scriptures and some prayer focus. We're going to send that out also uh, around 6 or shortly after that. And so you can kind of uh, have that for uh, prayer with your family, your family members, uh, focus, something you can open up with your family. You can read the scriptures that are being referenced and uh, just kind of get the, the gist of that particular subject and topic. Amen. And so uh, I want to encourage you to continue to be, uh, to Tune in and get connected with uh, those items, those things. Praise God. If you uh, have a Bible or an electronic device, I want to bring your attention back to Luke chapter 8. Uh, we've been reading from Luke chapter 8 over the last little while. And um, we've been talking about feeding the seed. The title of this is Feed the Seed. And... Um, Again, this is a series, and uh, we've been plowing along on this road using these scriptures, and uh, we've been addressing this parable of the seed and the sower. I'm going to go ahead and once again, I'm going to read the, the text and um, follow along the narrative and pick up where we left off and go ahead in communicating uh, the rest of the story. Verse number uh, four, I want to begin it in Luke chapter eight. And when much people were gathered together, that's Luke eight and four. And when much people were gathered together, and were come to him out of every place he spake of or spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And he sowed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it was withered away because it lacked moisture, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, with it and choked it, and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. I want to draw your attention to verse number seven and some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it. That means uh, the seed uh, produced something that was visible and evident. But the thorns also sprang up, and it choked what the seed produced. Amen. I mentioned to you in uh, the, the first segment of this particular parable that the wayside ground is the ground where uh, people had trodden down or walked on or stepped on. The ground, according to Jesus, as we go on in this parable, is likening to the, the, the ground is likening to our heart. And so and the seed is the word. And so the word is sown in the ground. The seed is sown in the ground and the word is sown in our heart. And so those who had a wayside ground, the ground was hard and the seed would come and plop down on that hard ground. The ground was hard because it was trodden down of men. And so, again, as I said before, it's when people walk on you and step on you, 
on your heart. Fences build up. Those by, that fell on the rock, it's, it's, it's not a hard place. You actually have some uh, area that the, the seed will fall on, and, and you have grass around it, and you have ground around the rock, but because the rock is in, in the ground, it prohibits uh, that seed from maturing and growing, and so it grows a little while. But because of the rock, or as Jesus uh, explained, because they're, because of uh, the word's sake, people get offended because of tribulation. And I liken this into what God allows to come along your way where you get offended with God. It's not necessarily something others do other than when they throw rocks at you. So sometimes you can be offended with men and sometimes you can be offended with God. In the first uh, scenario, the hardened ground, that was strictly caused by man and uh, or, or I could say, I guess, if God brought forth a, a drought, if you will, um, that land, your heart would dry out. And, and so uh, where, wherever you look at it, it's um, a man being involved and God being involved. That's why Paul said it's so important that we be found void of offense towards God and towards man. He said, that's what I do. I exercise myself to make sure I don't have any offense. And we need to understand that a lot of times, many people, when we're not offended with man, we are offended with God. And when we're not offended with God, we're offended with man. And they go hand in hand. That's why the Bible lets us know that, hey, our walk with God, our, the premises of us walking with God rely, rely on this. The commandment, the first two commandments, uh, all the other commandments uh, kind of center and uh, rely on the first two. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all the mind, heart, soul, and strength. And then you have to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. It's about love. It's about agape. It's about loving God with everything and loving everyone else around you. And so, amen, you can't have some uh, hidden issues with you concerning your walk and relationship with God and and your relationship with others. And so that's why we need to learn how to forgive and keep our hearts right and our heart cleansed and our, uh, our relationship with God and our relationship with man in the right place because we can't allow the word of God to be sown in its proper place and, and bring forth the fruit that God desires it that when we have offenses and hurt and everything else in our heart, we may think we can walk with God and live for God and do the things we need to do in God, but the the word will be hindered when there's any hardness or any objects that are in the ground of our heart. And people don't do that. People don't take the time to make sure that their ground is in the right place. We spend too much time focusing on what someone else's issues are. We spend some, too much time trying to decipher and, and discern what's going on with this person, that person. Why did they do this and why did they do that? And, and what, what, what was their motive and intent? And, and why did they uh, do something? I, I know it was ill will and they wanted harm. And we got to stop focusing on all that and start turning. With, we, you know, what we need to turn in when, when it relates to our heart and things that that transpire we always focusing on someone else now when it comes to sharing the gospel we need to go be, focus outward and when it comes time to walking with God we don't need to be closed in and worry about me and my and my kingdom and we need to be focused on God and his kingdom but here we are in this parable you have hardened ground because of what man will do, and that will affect the word of God. And so if I'm angry and I don't want to get rid of that anger, I'm angry at my wife and I want to carry it around for, for, for three days or three hours or three months or three weeks, amen, guess what? You may carry it around, and you may, be, you may walk with God, but what God is trying to do in your life at that particular moment, what he's trying to do going forward, you're not getting what you need, and you stop growing. I think people think that they can grow without the word of God, without the seed of God. You can't grow any further. When you stop allowing the, the, the seed of God to be planted, you know, the thing I, I hate about uh, my lawn and my grass is that i supposed to seed it every year. No, to supposed to. I've been living in this place for over 15 years, and my lawn doesn't look like some others because I don't, I don't really feed it 
properly. I don't seed it properly. Amen. I don't really have the time or the finances to make my grass look like carpet. Amen. But uh, uh, but uh, the, the issue is I supposed to feed it annually. Amen. I, 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 and let me just say this. Uh, I don't think that you're supposed to feed your heart annually. There are some people who think they can go to church once or twice, and that's enough. No. Amen. You, you, and when I say go to church, I mean inside of a building where you hear the word of God. Amen. But we can, we can receive or hear the word of God or fellowship with the word of God constantly when we spend time in the word. Amen. I'm telling you right now, God has placed us in a position that uh, coming together in the church is not necessarily possible at this particular time. And how else are you going to get the seed? Amen. You're going to have to find other ways to get the seed of the word of God in your heart that you can grow thereby. Amen. It's important for families to get together, if you will, if you have to. Whatever means you find to, 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 to begin to delve in God's word and, and, and to read his word, to get that seed that you need. Amen. I don't think anyone, uh, to, to my knowledge, uh, that, that are, are starving themselves, uh, that, that are choosing to go on a sabbatical and, and abstaining from food for, for months. And, and <laughs> you can't make it, I think. I don't know the the medical uh, time frame that you can make it without eating. I know Jesus went 40 days and 40 nights without food. Amen. I, and, and as far as that is concerned, I'm glad I'm not Jesus. <laughs> I would have been dead a long time ago. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, and so you want to go on a 40-day 40 40, 40 fast trying to be Jesus, go right ahead. No one's Jesus. And uh, so... I'll do whatever I can, but my body needs food. Amen. I, I, I've i been doing a better job of, of, of watching what I eat and things of that nature. But I'm telling you what, my your body needs food. It lets you know that, that you're, you're lacking. It lets you know that you need some nutrients and things of that nature. Have your soul let you know recently? Have your heart let you know that it's been missing some nutrients? It needs some food. It needs the word of God. It needs the seed, and the seed will cause fruit. It's the word of God. We need the word of God. And so, but we had to make sure when we are uh, allowing God to sow seed and when seed is being sown in our heart and in our life that we need to feed. The thing about seed is that it is at its most in, uh, infant state. It's, a, it's an embryo, if you will, and, and, or it's not even at an embryolic state. It's not at a, it's not a, a, a embryo as of yet. It's, a, it's just a seed. That causes an embryo. Once that thing breaks, breaks forth under the ground, and then it's able to grow. And so it's at that dormant state, and it needs to be fed. God's word needs to be fed. And this evening, I'm going to talk to you about what you can do to make sure when God's word is sown in your heart, that your heart is right, and that you feed the word with, with what it needs so you can your word, the word can grow and you can prosper in your walk with God. But we're talking about the ground right now and the bad types of ground. I'm going to talk about the good ground tonight. Amen. Again, so tune in at 6 o'clock. We're going to finally get to the good ground. We were talking about the bad ground long enough. Uh, I first began this. It was the good, the bad, and the wicked. And that's the first message in this series. If you happen to uh, go to our website and, and see some of the videos. Amen. And so here we are, we're, we're down to the seed that was sown among the thorns. Seed that was sown among the thorns. We all have heard, many of us heard, have heard this uh, parable. Again, this is nothing new to a lot of people who have been walking with God, but I, I think God has given me a different angle as far as communication of this particular parable. And so some fell among the thorns, and the thorn sprang up with it and choked it. Now, uh, this is, uh, if you can, I would like to give you a picture. Uh, I want to put a picture in your mind as to what's transpiring. And the seed is actually sown. The ground is actually fine. 
It's not hard. There are no rocks. However, because the, the, the ground is fine for producing fruit and something to grow up, it also has the ability and the nature to allow something else to grow up with it. And so even when your heart is not hard and you get rid of the offenses that are in your heart, uh, now because you are able to uh, sustain the seed and the word of God in your heart, because you've opened your heart, you need to be careful that other things doesn't crop in and choke up the word. Now, Thorns, or if you will, weeds grow because of neglect. And so you have to actually take time after or even before you sow seed to make sure that there's no weeds, there's no thorns, there are no thistles that grow up with the word and begin to choke the word. That word uh, choke actually means to strangle. You and I can have things in our lives where we're allowing the word of God to grow, but because we, are, we have other things that we're allowing to grow in our life at the same time, it gets a hold of what God put in there, and it begins to strangle it and choke it until it loses life. And now it possesses the field. It's in our heart. And we wonder what happened. Things were going so well. Everything was, was fine. I was growing in God and I was growing in the word. Or how about this? That word that I got, and there are some people who have been in church for years and years and years and years and years. And you look, the ground still looks the same. Still looks the same. I, I, I wanted to, I told my wife, I rolled past a a home, or actually I visited a Home Depot uh, about a month or so ago, maybe two months, and they had already in uh, planted, they had fruit trees. And I thought about grabbing one of those fruit. They had, uh, I think, they had apple trees, and I believe it was peaches or something like that. And I thought about that. It's like, man, I would like to put that in my backyard and, and, and grow uh, some uh, fruit trees. That, that would be really neat. Amen. Uh, I would love that. But I thought about our, my lawn and, and grass and what I would need to do. I thought about the landscape of it. I thought about the, I had pine trees, a roll of pine trees on one side, and, I was, and it doesn't really get enough sun and uh, sufficient sun in, in my yard. And so I'm like, I don't know if that thing is going to grow right, you see, because there are all sorts of uh, situations that even though my lawn in the back is fine, I have a lot of uh, grass Real grass in my in my my back, in my front lawn. All that yeah, I got crab grass and fake grass and and we it looks it looks green. I think we call everything green grass, but I'm talking about that tender right type of grass and 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 but in my backyard I could probably plant that thing. But there are other issues that that take place and uh, there's a slope in my backyard for drainage and I'll get into that tonight. And but and and so because of the surrounding the environment. It may not necessarily be conducive for the fruit tree. And I'm telling you, there are things in our life, the environment and surroundings in our life and in our heart that could cause uh, the fruit of God that, that needs to grow in our life. It will cause, uh, cause it to be hindered. Again, I remember uh, trying to plant. I said, I'm going to have me some watermelon. I, I remember when I was a young child and my my, my great-grandmother, going to my great-grandmother's home, and um, in the back of her yard, she, she, she had uh, fruit trees and uh, uh, grapevines, and she, she had a little uh, area where she would grow watermelons, and she had a plum tree, and, and I used to love going back there, man. And so, I, you know, I said to myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like my great-grandmother. I'm going to grow me some watermelon. And, uh, I mean... I, now that I think about it, when she grew her watermelon, it was way in the back of her yard where it was absolute sunshine, away from the trees and everything else. Well, 
I tried to grow some watermelon right on the side of my house. No more than three feet from the side of my house. Duh. You know I'm a city boy. <laughs> like three feet from my house, and my, my house's uh, shade was, was causing uh, the lack of sunshine. And so uh, the, the, the watermelon, I, I, something fuzzy came out of the ground and, and, and sprouted up, and I even got a little small watermelon. But it wasn't growing fast enough, and so it died out because it was not a lot of sunshine. It was too much covering. And, and I think some of us, we got too much covering going on. And, amen, we're covering the, the sun, the light of God to shine in our heart. And we wonder what's going on. But, I, again, we have to make sure the our surrounding is just right. If you're not getting enough light of, of God, and some of us are fellowshipping too much with darkness, and we're not allowing the light of God to shine, you got to come out of those dark errors. You have to come out from that dark living if you're going to want the Word of God to shine in your heart and the Word of God to produce the fruit that it desires. And, and so if there are some things that we must do, amen, for the ground. When I go travel to the eastern shore and you go and see all the cornfields and all that, you always see that it's open field. Open field. You see a lot of trees and all that, but, but beyond the trees, you see when they uh, when you see the open field, they'll begin to uh, plant crops and stuff like that in the open field. And they don't put it in the shade and on the, the, the wayside and where the, the rocky ground and things of that nature. And they don't put it where other things can choke up the seed that they put in the ground. And so when Jesus gave this parable, he said, hey, there." The, the, the ground that that uh, that is thrown this I'm sorry the the uh, the ground that has this seed that is sown among thorns that's other things that are there that that uh, you're gonna have to take care of and tend to there are other things that grow up along with the 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 seed that's sown and so you want to take your seed and make sure you position it in the right place now remember the seed is indiscriminate and the sower is indiscriminate the sower's responsibility is just to sow can i tell you the sower the responsibility of jesus is just to get the word in you the responsibility of the preacher is to get the word in you he can't do anything about what you're doing in your homes. He can't do anything about where you're spending time with those dark errors. He can't do anything about uh, what you're allowed to, to come along in your field to choke up the word. He can't work. He can't, he, you know, he, he's not responsible for the rocks of offenses. And so the sower is indiscriminate. He's concerned about the seed. The only thing that's in his mind, I got to sow the seed. I got, when a person is first saved, the, one of my most, uh, I guess the, the primary thing that I focus on is, is, is they got to get a Bible study. Some of you, you got so sick and tired of me talking about Bible studies, Bible studies, Bible studies, Bible studies. I will buy home Bible studies out because people need the word of God sown. You get somebody in a tank, that's great. Somebody received the Holy Ghost, that's wonderful. But as soon as, if you just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you're a newborn child of God, uh, newly born in, in, in the body, you need to make sure you get into a home Bible study. I don't care what's a home Bible study, Bible study in a uh, McDonald's. I don't care if you six feet away, 10 feet away, 12 feet away. Amen. Whether you're doing a virtual Bible study, we need the word of God. But along with the word of God, when especially a, a young babe in Christ, not just the young baby in Christ. I don't care how long you've been living for God. You got to make sure you take care of your field. It's one thing, you know, that you you know you you plant you you plant seed or sow seed, and you just go about your business. All right, whatever happens, happen. I'll just take what you know what I get. Now, the good farmer. It's going to say, okay, I'm going to send somebody out there to sow seed, but I got to make sure I, I take care of that ground because I want the most fruit to be produced. And, and so I don't want just tenfold. I, I don't want just thirtyfold. I, I want maybe some 60, 90, and 100 fold. You are responsible. Too many people blame everybody else for why they are not 
uh, things transpiring in their life and why they are not progressing in their walk with God, while they are stagnant, while they, they seem to have slowed up. And I've seen some people have given it all when they first come to God, and, and next thing you know, they, they pump the brakes. And I'm telling you what, it's not because of someone else. It's not necessarily because of a church or, or somebody or, or, or somebody uh, uh, that, that's in leadership. Maybe it's because there are some things I must do. You got to guard the word. When that seed is sown, you got to protect the word. Amen. It must become precious to you that you you, you decided, you know what, I'm not going to let anything affect this seed. I I, I have to kind of nurture it. I have to be on guard. I have to, uh, to, 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 to water it. I have to take care of it. My wife, she's, you know, we hadn't had over the last couple of years when, when my wife wanted to, to move, we kind of got rid of everything. We didn't have any greenery in our house, not many live plants. I don't even really think we had any fake plants either. But uh, we, we, my wife has been bringing in plants, and, she, and, 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 and she's taking care of them. But every now and then she's walking through the house, and not every now and then, almost every day. I hear her talk, and I'm like, who are you talking to? She says, the plant. <laughs> And she do she she she, she does her rounds and she she actually talks it. Now I remember my, I remember my grandmother used to talk to up her plants. You can say that's a little bit crazy, woo, you know. But anyway, but she's spending time taking care of it. She's nurturing it. Amen. You gonna you have to nurture the word of God. Amen. If you care about the word of God and you want to be responsible for the word of God, you got to nurture. You have to take care of it. You need to make sure it's precious in your sight. I want the word sown in my heart, and I don't want anything to affect it. I want it to grow. And sometimes we want to we think that the word of God doesn't work because we're not doing our part. The seed seed works. The seed is powerful. And within the seed, it has all the ability. One little seed. You can have a great harvest with one seed. You say, how? Well, you let that seed, you plant that seed, you let it grow. It produces a tree. Amen. That tree has all sorts of fruit in it. You take all the seeds from all those fruit. You plant all those. You do it right. Take care of it. You put those in the ground. You let next thing you got a bunch of, a bunch of trees. Amen. And it, the, process, the process grows. All you need is one little seed. We need to take care of the seed that's being sown. And so feed in the seed on the, the, the ground that had the thorns. Jesus gave this interpretation of this particular ground or type of ground. In verse number 14 of Luke chapter 8, it says, And that which fell among thorns. Now, fell among thorns. I don't think, now again, the seed is indiscriminate. The soul was just throwing it. And there were thorns, obviously, around that particular area. But notice what Jesus, notice when he gave the description, he says the, the, the thorns sprang up. Sprang up. In other words, you couldn't see the thorns that were there first. They were in the ground. They were dormant. I'm just going to tell you like this. We have all sorts of stuff in our hearts. All sorts of things in our lives. And and, and I, I, I I, I don't have a problem with people who have seeds of sin. Guess what? Because we all have them. And sometimes I have people say, you using them? You know, you don't know. I, I tell you what, I, as, as long as we all have seeds, and, and I remember the bishop, you know, people have seeds, but as long as those seeds stay dead and dormant. And so the thing is, is when we feed the seeds. The problem is we feed the wrong seeds. And so that seeds of sin, as long as that person don't allow, they don't uh, tend to that seed, they just leave it dead. You see, when you came to God, you had sin in your life. 
Now, I'm just going to let you know like this, hey, you may not be acting upon that sin, but sin is still there. Sin is still in your fleshly nature. It's that, but long as you leave it alone, long as you don't feed it, long as you don't allow it to grow, long as you're trying to put some, some weed killer on that thing, keep it in check. You got to keep it in check. Because stuff get to springing up and you just can't help it as long as you're living. Things is going to come. Things are, you, you just can't help. The wind blows. You know, the wind can blow. You see the, the birds out there in my, 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 my lawn. It's like, what are they doing? Sometimes you don't see them. Other times you see them. After a big, strong storm and the wind blows, we have uh, these pine cone trees and on the side, but guess what? Those seeds will blow all in our, our yards. I, in our yard, I can't see all that, but the birds do. After it's all over, I see a bunch of birds in my yard eating seed. Because just because of the wind. As long as you have a yard, as long as you have a heart, things will blow along in your life. As long as you're living, things are going to blow your way. And you must understand that you're going to have to yield to and take care of the seed in the field of your heart. Things are just going to come. Things are just going to happen. It's just the way it is. And so here we are. We have this seed among the thorns. And so if I have thorns, now this is the way it is. I, I, I love uh, they have this product called uh, feed, wheat and seed. Feed and you can tell I don't do anything. It's weed and feed. That's what it is. It's weed and feed. I've actually bought it once, and basically what it does is it 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 it, it kills the the weeds, but it doesn't kill the grass. Now, one time I brought something that kills everything. I sprayed it on my lawn. I'm trying to kill weeds. It killed my lawn too. See, some of us that's what we're doing. We, we're trying to kill something else, and we ended up killing the word of God also. Killing everything. And so that weed and feed, it just, it actually helps the grass to grow while it's killing the, 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 um, the weeds, the stuff that shouldn't grow in your grass. But Jesus likened this. He said, hey, these are the ones that uh, sown among the thorns. Verse number 14. And they which fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth Go forth, get that. When they've heard, they got the word of God, they go forth, it's con it producing. What transpires is, and are choked with cares. Now, Matthew calls it the cares of this life, or the cares of life. It's the anxieties of life. When you get so caught up, and it's I'm telling you, especially right now, what's going on right now. But not just what's going on right now. People have so many cares, and that's why Jesus said, or Peter said, cast your cares upon me. Well, Jesus said, cast your cares upon me. Peter said this way, cast your cares on him, for he cared for you. Jesus wants you to cast your cares on him because, why? Because the cares will choke up the word that he's trying to sow in your heart. When you, when you go about life and you're, you, you're so worried and so fearful and, and, and you know, you, you get so caught up in everything that's going on, this is how it works. You know, you can't, you only have 24 hours in a day. And there are so many different things you have to take care of and do. And so when you get the word of God sown in your heart and you spend so much time worrying about things, you can't nurture the word. And what you're doing is you're feeding upon your fear. There's a fear frenzy, and you're, you're feeding your fear and your anxiety and your worry. And I see people getting worked up and worked up, worked up over something they have no control over. And as long as you get worked up over things you don't have any control over, the Word of God is sitting there trying to grow, and you, you are taking your anxiety, and you're choking out the Word of God you just got. You just read the Bible and got something good, and then you spend the rest of your, your, rest of your day worrying about something in your life, and it's just strangling the Word that you just got sown in your heart. 
And so you, we have to be careful because when the word of God is sown in our heart, we spend too much other time worrying about situations, having anxieties and, and pressures and fear. Hey, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Amen. You can decide, hey, I'm going to be of good carriage. That word cheer means carriage. I, I, I am not going to allow things to keep me down and keep me frustrated and in anguish and everything else, I'm going to think on those things that are pure. Those things that are true, those things that are honest. Amen. I'm though, if there's any virtue and a praise, uh, I need to get my mind right and think on the right things. And anxiety comes because I think on the wrong things and I'm tending to the weeds. I've never seen a person go out and say, oh, let me feed this weed. Start stomping their grass and start feeding their weeds. But the cares of his life, this is exactly what we're doing. We're going out in our lawn and we're spraying some fertilizer on our weeds. We're taking a pot of, the pot of water and we're our water pot and we're taking it out to where our weeds are growing and we're pouring the, pouring the uh, water on our weeds and say, grow, 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 grow. Cares of this life, they will choke out the word. No one is so many well-meaning Christians struggle. They stop growing. They don't go on to, they, I, I've seen so many people say, you know what, I, I, hey, uh, uh, I believe God is, is, is I believe this is going to transpire my life. I believe God is calling me into this, and God is leading me into that, and I believe God is going to work this. And some of us have had dreams and, and, and a word and visions of where we need to be in God, and we, we, we blame everyone else of why it's not happening. I'm going to tell you, no man can stop you from getting what God has for you. No one, no devil in hell, no situation, no problem. I'm telling you what, you and I, we're responsible for our ground. And we allow the things of this world, the cares, anxiety, worrying about what's going to happen. I'm just going to tell you like this, I used to be a worry ward. I remember in my teens, I, I mean, I used, to, I used to always be concerned. I, I used to be, my, I, I, my father would say, you know, you, 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 you know, you get so high, and I had highs and I had lows. And, I, I, and when I remember as a young adult, I was always worrying about uh, uh, bills and, and um, uh, job security. And, and, and as a matter of fact, even as a, a, a young Christian, uh, when I first started working in research, and I was working on soft money, meaning, uh, yeah, I mean, that money could come and go. It wasn't hard. I wasn't on a salary. It was based on a grant, and grants come and go. And uh, when, I, when I had a whisper of, of, of the grant wasn't doing well, I'm, I'm telling you what, I had fear. How am I going to take care of my family? And that fear would cripple. I didn't let my, parent, my family know, my wife know, but that family, that, that, I mean, so that fear would cripple me. And I was like, oh, man. And then I begin, you see, when you battle anxiety, you begin to take action in your own hands. When you see that something needs to happen, you're not waiting for God. You're not trying to listen to God. You're not trying to get a word because you feel like the word is not working. Why? It's not working because it's not growing. Your anxiety is choking the word of God out. So now I must do something. And then I, I'm like, I'm going to make something happen. You see, anxiety causes you to make something happen instead of trusting in God. That's the cares of this life. Is that's the thorns. It chokes out. It chokes. But the second of the three areas of cares, the second was the pleasure. Or, or was it riches? Let me go back down to my Bible. It's riches. Riches. The cares and riches now, a lot of people think, well, you know what? I'm not rich. I don't have anything to worry about. It's not, don't worry. It's not talking about that. You say, well, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm not rich. I used to read this when I, when I first was <laughs> reading the Bible. I, I, I was a newborn babe in, in Christ. I was reading, you know, read, I read the Bible as much as I could, and, and, and I saw riches. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have any money. But uh, Matthew says the... Uh, 
deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of riches. In other words, it's not talking about being rich. It's talking about wanting to be rich. It, it's actually uh, talking about uh, a desire to be. Now, or if you're rich, it's just that's your whole focus. You see, when money or material becomes your whole focus. You see, some people, they live for God or, or live in God and walk with God, but because they get so caught up with trying to make ends meet. Then you have people working 10 jobs, working 30 hours a day. You say, well, only, it's only 24. I know, that's the point. Or, you know, all these get-rich-quick schemes and how you can, these pyramids or how you're going to make all this money. And, and, you you know, you because you get so focused, you see, the Bible says this, a man can't serve God and serve mammon. And some people really think, really think, they think, you know what, God, I, I, I know what your word says, but I can do that. Some people say, well, I know your word says, you know, you can't serve God and serve money, but I, you know, that was that was, that was uh, uh, Matthew, and that was Luke who said that. Actually, Jesus said it. And the thing is, you can't serve God and serve material things. You, one has to be your master. And I know some people, well, they give up on the things of God so they can make more money. Well, I gotta, I'm sorry, I won't be able to come to church anymore because, you know what, now I got this other job. Amen. Let me tell you something right now. Amen. You must put God as the first and foremost in your life, and whatever happens after that happens. Now, I believe that a person should work. Amen. But we need to seek God and find out what that limit and that measure is. I believe a person should take care of their family. But it gets to the point where when somebody has to, and I, I get, you know, you have to work some extra hours to make ends meet. But when you have to work so much that you can't feed the word of God, I got to feed my family. What about feeding the word of God that's sown in your heart? Said the deceitfulness of riches. People get caught up in trying to, Make a buck. I had one guy tell me, well, you know what, you know, pastor, I want my, you know, I want to get things right in my walk with God and live right for God or whatever. He said, but I, I need to do this first because if I make a, much, a, a, a certain amount of money, I can save up enough money, then I don't have to worry about it anymore, and then I can start living for God and, 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 and giving myself to the kingdom of God and being able to be a blessing to the kingdom. I said, oh, okay. And I said, you watch. I was saying, I didn't tell him, pretty soon you won't be in church. And within a few months, he wasn't in church any longer. Because he allowed the deceitfulness of riches. If I make a certain amount of money and I, I develop a certain amount of, uh, uh, and my egg, net, you know, what is it called? Is it egg nest? Nest egg. Nest egg. That's my, uh, a certain amount of my nest egg. I, if I accumulate a, enough and then I can give myself to the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. If you don't give yourself to the kingdom of God first... Oh, I'm going to accumulate first, and then I can give myself to God. No, it doesn't work that way. God will never play second fiddle to you. He must be first. And so the, the, the cares of this life, the, 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 the riches, the deceitfulness of riches, and, you know, I'm, I'm like this. Uh, I, I'm, I had to take some time to get there, but I'm like this. Whatever I get, I get. I, I, don't, I really don't. So I had one lady walk by, and she asked me for a dollar. She said, could you give me, or give me some money? And she saw me coming out of the church building. I said, I don't have any money on me. You lying? I was like, oh, actually. And I, and I tried to talk to her for a little bit. I don't want to talk to you. Get away from me. I, you know you got money. And I was like, yeah. 
I really don't. I don't carry money. I can, I can walk around and don't necessarily carry, carry money on me. Or I can have money, a few dollars, in my wallet, and that, that few dollars will stay in my wallet for months. I had some money in my drawer, uh, and it's sitting there. My wife, can, hey, can I have this money in the drawer? I said, how you know it's in there? <laughs> what are you doing? You looking for my spare change? It, she, she always, but she, let me, let me clear, she always wanted to put it in the offering. Every time she, every time I, every, any spare change I had, money I have laying around, so let me just put it in the offering. That's what she wanted. I just have it sitting there. I have it sitting there for a rainy day. Or whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do with a couple of dollars, of it, you know. So it just sits there for whenever I need it. But I don't, you know. I, I've, I've, I've tried. I've tried to get to a place where um, I, I that I don't leave, live by that. I'm, it just took me a while to get there. Whether I have or don't, as long as you know my bills are paid. And I'm like this to be totally honest. I remember when we were trying with times of struggle, and I tell my wife, don't. Don't 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 feel pressure. We're gonna pay what we can pay. We're gonna trust God. We're gonna pay our tithes. Uh, give give our offerings. We do that first. And some of you wondering why things aren't working. Amen. Because God has a, a way of things. He has a a system and an order of things. And and I, we give first to the kingdom. And, and then we take care of our bills. We've always done that, even when things were really rough and really bad, especially early on. And, and we, you know, I remember when my wife was pregnant, she couldn't work. Uh, my wages was being gone because I did something foolish before I got saved. And really not foolish, it was reckless or whatever. And, and, and things of that nature. So when we first came, uh, she, she, she was carrying uh, Sarah at the time, and she wasn't working. I... I <laughs> most of my money was being garnished and I was wondering how I was going to make it. And guess what? That's when I got the revelation of paying tithes. <laughs> I'm like, wow, what a revelation right now. But you know what? I, I received a revelation and I was faithful in this kingdom. And I'm talking for over a year and a half. I don't know how, well, I do know how now, but I didn't know how we got through. I don't know how we Paid out every single bill. I don't know. We had food on the table. I'm telling you what, God is faithful. It's not all about money, but money can become a problem. You know, they, they say, give a man money, watch him act funny. People act funny about their money. And Jesus said, hey, you can't serve me and serve man. He said, the, the, the riches, the deceitfulness of riches. Let me tell you something. God can do more with 90% or 80% or 85% than you can do with all 100% of your income. Somebody said, I, don't, I can't afford tithes. God tell me, I, I can't afford right now, but once I build up this nest egg, you're going to lose. You're not even going to be in church in a little while. But you start doing right and investing in the kingdom of God, you watch. God will take care of you. Now, some, some people say, well, you know what? You know, I've been paying my tithes for, for six months, and, and I'm still in the same predicament. No, you're not. No, you're not. Now you're faithful in God. <laughs> now your money is not cursed. Now you're in the same predicament in terms of you're still at the same things going on, but now you're blessed. You see, I, I, I would rather walk the same road somebody else is walking in and experience the same thing, but they're walking in their curse and I'm blessed. You see, because man doesn't determine the blessing God does. I want to be blessed in God's eyes. Deceitfulness of riches. We got to be care careful. So we have to, have to get to a place where God, you know what? You own the, all the cattle of the hill. Silver and the gold is yours. God, whatever I have, is, is whatever I have, you gave it. Uh, if I gave somebody... A hundred dollars, don't worry, that's definitely hypothetical. <laughs> Very hypothetical. If I gave somebody a hundred dollars, amen, 
You can't, you know, brag about what you did to get it. It was a gift. It was a gift. Now, God gives us, or actually he loans us, so our life is on loan. And he's wanting to know what you're going to do with your loan. He expects you to, to, to do something and bring back interest. He gave the one one talent, the other two, the other five. Say, do something with it. God wants you to do something with it. Now, you see, uh, I, you can't, you know, get all caught up, so caught up with, with, with finances that, you know, that becomes your total. And some people get all twisted when you start talking about finances. You know, I, but we, we need to understand that it's really just, it's not about money. It's about what owns us. And if, if money, if everything really belonged to God, I, it's on loan. And so when I give 10%, I'm only giving him back what he gave me. It's just like this. God gives you $100 and say, okay, um, you need to give 10 of it back. But he's, he's giving you the option. I don't know why I'm talking about money and talking about tithes, but maybe it's a good time to talk about that. God, somebody gives you $100. So if I give you $100, I say, okay, I'm going to give you $100. Now, what I, what I would like for you to do is to give back to me and $10, $10. If I gave you $100, I say, so if I just tell everybody, I get, got 100 people, let me do it different. I got 100 people, I give them $100 and say, this is it. I'll give you $100. But this is the stipulation on giving you $100. I really expect you to give 10 back. And, um, and, if you, and you can give back extra if you want to. That's a free will offering. And so the whole the part of the deal really is you're supposed to give back 10. Now, and, and then you can give back whatever uh, you, and then you can give back whatever. You're supposed to pay back 10, but give back whatever else you want. So that's tithes and offerings. But you see, the way it works is, why did you give me 100? See, God could give us 90 and keep back the, the other 10. But God, that's, that's not how God works. He doesn't keep back from us. So he gives us the whole 100 because he's going to give everything. And he just want to see if you're going to give back what you owe. And out of the goodness of your heart, are you going to give any more beyond that? But see, when we hold back and we hold back from God, and hey, I, I'll give you a dollar. See, see, we are living in the, the, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, and the word is being sown, but guess what? Because we get so caught up with, with money really being our, our Lord and master over us, it begins to choke up the word of God. See, we get, I don't know if I can give that much. Let me tell you what, the, see, a lot of people walk away from God. The very first thing they do is they stop paying tithes. When, 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 when uh, couples have problems, most of the time it's, it's centered around money. And people try to act like money, you know, is not an issue. That's why the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. Money is not the root of all evil. You can have money and be okay. Like I said, I, I don't love money, but I like it a whole lot. <laughs> You give me money. I just don't want to destroy me. Amen. So riches, you can't let it own you. Some of you ready for me to get off on that? Get off, get off of that one. And the pleasures of this life was the third thing that choked up. And so you have cares, you're so full of anxiety, you're so worried about money or so focused on making money, getting money and money, uh, uh, material things, because it doesn't just mean the green stuff, it means material things. And you get so caught up in material things that, that you know, it choke up your livelihood in God. And then he says, pleasure. The pleasures of this life. Too busy worrying about having a good time. Pleasures of this life. It's the gratification of pleasure. 
It's to, it's to focus on the central man. It's, it, it talks about amusement. And I, so many people will. I, now, I, I really believe everyone should take a vacation. I, I, I really believe that. I believe everyone, everyone should take a time where they get away. But some people live by that, that the, the uh, Southwest uh, phrase, phraseology or uh, what is that, their tagline? You want to get away? <laughs> they want to get away every time. You got to be careful about wanting to get away from church all the time. Well, I'm going here. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Well, Pastor, I can't come to church today because I'm going to here. I can't come to church today because I'm going to King's Dominion. I always wonder why people can't just find another day to go to these places. Why are people always choose to do something on a Sunday? I, I, that's what I don't get. When, since when does Sunday, Sunday become fun day? People, don't, it's not Sunday; it's fun day. And I'm just talking about on Sunday. I'm just talking about the things of God. When you get so caught up in the pleasures of this life, uh, about I'm just going to have me some fun. Well, first of all, you, it, it's fun. I, I like pleasures. He gives pleasure. Now I'm trying. I'd like to have a good time. I, I, I don't. I like to have. I want to make sure I have a good, clean. You know. Good clean time, though. But I, I just want to make sure it just don't strangle the word of God, where that's what I'm focused on. That's what, I, what I'm given to. It's, you know, we get caught up on being entertained all the time. I don't have any problem with that as long as it's godly, as long as it's, uh, or what, what should I say, as long as it doesn't keep me from the things of God. And, and, and I'm going to say it this way. It doesn't have to be godly, so let me, let me rephrase that. You say, oh, it don't have to be godly. God, let me tell you something. God didn't give us natural flesh to not enjoy natural things. Some things are natural. Now, there's nothing godly about chocolate ice cream. There's nothing godly. They can call it heavenly all they want to. They call it heavenly ham. That's nothing godly about chocolate ice cream. But amen. Now, God gave me a taste bud to enjoy it. And when I can, I can eat something chocolate, and I'm going to eat something chocolate. Now, I've cut down on I, I've I've cut down so drastically. And I, and I, but anyway, but I, when I want that taste, that morsel, so God gave us the ability to enjoy he gave us natural ability, but we have to keep things in moderation. We, we can't allow ourselves to be overtaken by your flesh being in control. Flesh will grow and become a beast. You see, that's why, you know what, the, the word of God is sown, and it's springing up, and in your flesh you got this beast, and we're constantly feeding the beast. And that beast is growing. We wonder why. What's going on? And it goes out and it just chokes up the word of God. And some, you know, some people get so, you know, we get so callous. And, you know, we get so hard. Follow ground at the word of God. And sometimes it's because of we, us feeding the beast. The pleasure. Pleasures. Of life, and again, I'm not saying you know I can't. Some people think when they come to church, well, I can't do anything fun anymore. I, you know what? Now, some people, I admit, you know, I lighten up. Everything is not, you know. I, I, I just don't want to be like the Joker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where everything is, a, is, is, you know, I, I have moments where I like to laugh. There's a time and there's a place for everything. Amen. And, and, and but, you know, we and God desires for us to enjoy life. But I believe we need to find out. It's, a, it's one thing where, where God gives us a a uh, a boundary for the enjoyment of life that we're supposed to have. 
But the problem is sin comes in when we get out of the boundary that God has set. And so now God gives us things that we can enjoy and pledges that we can enjoy. But then we say, God, that's not enough. I want more. And then flesh begins to take over. And now it's in charge. And it will choke. Flesh doesn't want the word. I'm, I'm sorry. Flesh doesn't want to hear the word of God. Flesh, every time, it will choke out the word of God. Or what you're telling me to deny my flesh? See, the, word, the reason why the flesh doesn't like the word, the word says deny the flesh. You know the flesh doesn't want to hear that. The word says yield to the spirit. You know the flesh don't want to hear yield to the spirit. Why? Because it's at war with the spirit. What? You want to feed your spirit? Hey, don't you know that's my enemy? So flesh, every chance it gets, it wants to choke out the word and the and the uh, what you would call the not the enemy. What's the opposite of enemy? The uh, the ally. Where flesh is pleasure. Go ahead, eat of the tree. It is good to the eyes. It, it, it's good to, it, it's desirable for food. It's going to make you wise. Come on, you'll be like God. See, God is trying to hold back on you. Go ahead, take of this. And flesh wants to go beyond the boundaries. And it will always choke out the word of God. Strangle. Try to get a hold of. Now, now again, tonight I have the good stuff. <laughs> We're talking about what we need to keep out. And so you have this ground that's sown among thorns. I'm just going to tell you like this. You can say, well, I don't, I don't have any thorns. Yes, you do. If it's just seedlings. I'm just telling you, you can go and, and at one time, I, I thanked the church. That the church gave me a pastor's appreciation gift. They hear me talking about lawns so much. They, they gave me a subscription to one of those companies. And I don't want to name it because I'm ready to say something negative. <laughs> they gave me a, uh, a subscription to one of those lawn companies, those turkeys, those jokers, they came out to my lawn. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm expecting, okay, in a, in a few weeks now or a month, I'm going to have some green grass. They come out there that first time they came out. I'm like, what do these jokers do? Next time they came out, they did something else. By the third time, I'm hot. Like, when I'm going to have some good grass, man? They tell me, oh, it's going, I'm like, they were like, we're not, they didn't even sow any seed. I'm like, what are you doing? Y'all didn't put in the grass seed. No, we got to do all this first. And it, it, they came out they, in the spring. It was springtime. I guess they, we didn't know better. They said, no, we sow seed in the, in the, in the winter. I know, in the, in the fall. I said, no, spray some seed on that thing. Man, cause that thing. They wanted to do everything else. And they wanted to spend so much time doing all these things. And I'm like, get rid of, I tell you, this is, let me tell you what y'all need to do. And I know they were milking it, you see. They just wanted to, they wanted to last for two years. Right, they want a contract for two years. I'm like, I tell you what you do. All you really have to do, you go out there, you dig up all the dirt, you turn it over, and you go to Home Depot and you get the stuff that's rolled out and roll those things out on my lawn, and now I got green grass. You can do this in one day. But they didn't want to do that. They, want, they didn't want to turn my lawn over. What do you call those rolls of grass? I don't remember. Sod. Yeah, it's called sod. You take that and you lay it out, and guess what? In one day, you got all green grass, and now all you got to do is, is, is take care of it. But guess what? You can do that, but leave it alone. Somewhere along the line, along the way, there's going to be some sort of weed in your lawn. Now, this sod had no, it was weedless. 
But within a year or two years or something, guess what's going to happen? How? Because something is going to blow along. Weed seeds. And then next thing you know, you get dandelions popping up and this and, and everything's just starting. Why? And you wonder, how did that get there? Because just by living, there's going to be pleasures, cares, and riches that are going to come. And you can say, well, I don't have anything on my lawn. You sit tight. It's coming. And it's just going to be, so you have to be sure that you have to make sure I got to keep out the cares. I got to keep the cares of this life. I got to keep out the deceitfulness of riches. And I got to keep my pleasures within the limits of God. So guess what? This stuff don't uh, choke up the word that is sown in my heart. It is the will of God for the word of God to work in our life. But we got to feed. The seed. Feed the seed. And I'm just going to tell you like this. It, call, it takes too much time and too much money for me to do to my lawn what needs to be done. Now, I may sound like a lawn neglectist. And you may say, well, you do that now. now I'm not saying my lawn looks ugly. You might come at my lawn and say, it don't look that bad. I'm really, it doesn't look that bad, especially when you, in the summertime, you cut that thing down. I like when I mow and get those lines in it and everything else, lines in my lawn, and, and you look out there, you say, man, it looks nice. Now, a, 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 a true green person come out there and say, well, this is not real, the right type of tender grass, but you look from 10 feet, look like, man, you got a nice looking lawn, so I got that thing cut and everything else. But, it, you know, we, I have to take care of it. It takes too much time. Now, I cut my lawn. Don't, don't worry. I don't let it grow and look crazy. I want to represent. You know, I represent. And so <laughs> I want to represent us, represent the Lord, represent, you know, man, that pat, he's a pat. Look at him. That, that preacher that, and everybody in my neighborhood know who I am. That's that pastor. <laughs> I walk down the street. Are you that pastor? Yeah, I noticed your lawn. <laughs> so I try to keep up with the Joneses, but I ain't putting a whole bunch of money all into it. I don't have that type of, and I don't have that type of time either to put in it. Now, if you're feeling compassion, the Holy Ghost, if you're feeling compassion, the individual church, don't, don't, don't do that true lawn, and <laughs> I told the name now. Don't do none of those people to come and whatever. Hey, Amen. You go to Home Depot, get some saw, get some workers or whatever. Just turn it all over. Hey, it's done. And once, if I can get it back to that, I'll take care of it right. I would. I'm coming to, she said, my wife said, okay, I would. Amen. But uh, it takes too much now. Uh, when we first bought the house, we had this massive, and the seed was sown and all that. Everything was nice, and it was starting to grow. What happened was we had a hill in the back of y'all. We had a big rainstorm. It was a flood, and it came and washed all the seed of our new house away. And so the lawn is from day one got messed up, and I ain't had, you know, I couldn't invest in, in trying to get it right again. And so what am I saying? You think I'm just talking about my grass and lawn. No, I'm talking about your heart. And so your thing is, is that you, it takes time and it takes money. Why the church are always talking about money? It's not that we need it, but you need to give it. Why the church are always talking about giving the time? You need to give it. You see, if I want my lawn to grow, it's going to take time. You can say, well, you, well I, can, I, I will say this. It takes time or money. In the kingdom of God, it takes time and money. See, uh, I, can, I can pay someone else to do it, and they can do it all the time. Some of my neighbors, that's what they, they have someone else to take care of their lawn. And there's someone else to mow it and all that. I asked the guy, hey, uh, won't you uh, give me a price? He was mowing everybody else's lawn, this company, whatever. He told me that price, oh, my goodness. I, I thought I was eating a peanut butter sandwich. I got to choking really hard. <laughs> I'm like, oh, 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 what? 
Every, oh, man, I don't know if I can stomach that. That's, that's you know, uh, I don't know. We, it may come to that. Some of you say, well, you have a rod and mower. What are you talking about? I can go outside for 30 minutes and come back in sneezing like crazy, messed up for three days, whatever. And so it, it just takes too much time, money, and things of that nature. Now, I can do that for my natural lawn. I can do that for the ground and the field and my 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 uh, front lawn, my fr- the front of my house, the back of my house, side of my house. I cannot afford to do that in my heart and in my life. I can't afford to say, well, you know what? I, it just takes too much. You see, when I allow the word to be sown, I must take the responsibility of taking care of that ground. Previous to the word being sown, while the word is being sown, and after the word is being sown. I am responsible for feeding the seed, the word of God. That seed is powerful. It has the ability to produce everything that God intends. But I, in God, you see, the seed is powerful. The sun will shine on the seed. The rain will fall and cause the seed to grow. But I'm responsible for the ground. And I must take care. I'm not responsible for the rain. I'm not responsible for the light. Per se, I just got to make sure it shines. If rain doesn't come, I got to be responsible for watering it. I'm responsible for the ground of my heart. Have you taken a responsibility for the ground of your heart? Have you taken a responsibility in the care of making sure it's not trodden down and hardened? They're there not offenses and rocks and stones. That the word of God is not growing up among thorns. That in your life you're not so full of cares, so caught up with mammon, riches, money, material, or so taken away by the pleasures of this life that you neglect the word of God. Amen. This is a time and a moment of reflection, maybe the thinking. Reflect over your life. Reflect of what's going on in your life and Time to be honest with yourself and with God. God, how much do I take the time? How much do I invest in concerning your word? Do do I give the attention? Am I attentive to the ground of my heart and my life? to make sure your word is going in the proper place and that nothing is choking it out. Amen. Wherever you are, as I close this session, this segment, won't you begin to talk to him right now and ask him, invite him, invoke him to help you. If your flesh is out of control and Your emotions are out of whack. Your mind races 100 miles an hour. So caught up in what transpires in this life. I'm telling you, troubles are going to come. Anxiety don't have to get the best of you. Amen. This world will always, always have a financial system. But it doesn't have to be your master. There will always be pleasures and things to do. But those things don't have to overtake you and cause your flesh to be out of control. I'm talking about feeding the seed. These are the things that we have to be mindful of. We have to be aware of, cognizant of. Tonight I, I will be talking to you about the good ground, how you can have the good ground. But right now, won't you present yourself to the Lord. God, 
Search my heart. Give me the grace, the power, the courage. Give me the tenacity, God. The mindset to protect the word that you want to sow. To protect my field, to put up a, a hedge or a fence that nothing can come in that I don't want to come in. And when the winds blow and allow the seeds of God of pleasure, riches, and cares come in, God, help me to be attentive to it, not neglectful. God, I want my mind, my heart, my attention, my life to be focused on you, that your word can produce some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Produce what you need to produce in my life. I know it's only through your word. I want your, grow, your word to grow. I don't want it to become stagnant. I want your word to grow. I don't want it to become diseased. I, I don't want it to wither away. In the name of Jesus Christ, good ground. God, give us good ground. In the name of Jesus Christ, give us good ground, O oh Lord. God, give us the attitude and the mindset to take care of what you have entrusted to us, what you have put in us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pour down like rain. Washing. 